this video how 60 patients with advanced stages kidney disease achieved a huge drop in creatinine levels and avoided dialysis with the easiest dietary intervention ever. Catherine here, imagine this for a moment. You just changed your kidney health from this to this in seven days. How? With one of the easiest to follow and yet most effective dietary interventions actually supported by science. In this randomized controlled trial, advanced stage CKD patients were able to improve their kidney function just by following 7 super easy tips. Yes, your diet doesn't have to be complicated to work. So, the way we are going to do this today is simple. We have 7 days to improve and each day you will have a new tip to follow. Don't miss my last tip in particular because that one is going to make your diet so much easier. Before that, let's start with our day 1. This is a tip to drop your creatinine levels instantly. So here's the scoop, adding an extra scoop of fiber doesn't just keep things moving smoothly it also slashes your creatinine levels this comes from a review of studies published on nature by the way on average creatinine levels dropped by minus 22.83 millimoles per liter yes that's a big deal and all they did was to add some supplements which is important because it means that these patients didn't improve because they for example replaced meat with plant-based foods or because they added more antioxidants or vitamins no they lowered their creatinine levels just by adding a fiber supplement such as acacia fiber or psyllium husk and now you might be wondering if both acacia fiber and psyllium husk are great, which one of these two supplements is my soulmate? Or should I play the field and take both? Well, that depends on your diet and your blood works. In my experience, acacia fiber is more effective at reducing the absorption of uremic toxins. So I usually recommend that one to people in the advanced stages. Plus, its low maintenance doesn't need much water to get the job done. Yeah, acacia fiber is the dessert cactus of fiber supplements. Psyllium husk, on the other hand, is like a primrose. It needs a lot of hydration to thrive. But hey, it's going to be worth it. In fact, psyllium husk is a beast at lowering cholesterol. It basically sucks the cholesterol right out of your blood. Impressive, right? One last tip about fiber supplements. If you need to lose weight, always take a fiber supplement half an hour before meals with lots of water. This works especially well with psyllium husk because this supplement requires a lot of water to work and it will turn that water into a gel. You drink that gel before a meal, you'll feel fuller and you'll end up eating less food. Talk about the diet hack! And if you want the best of both worlds, creatinine lowering acacia fiber and cholesterol bursting psyllium husk, there is a new supplement that combines both. And check out the link in description for more info. And no matter which fiber supplement you choose, remember, never take a full dose the first day. When it comes to fiber supplements, always start gradually and this brings us to the next tip of today's video okay day two here's a true golden nugget of wisdom start gradually yes that's right guys baby steps and this tip isn't just for supplements it's for your whole diet the diet is the cornerstone of a better kidney health we all know that now here's the kicker, whenever I tell people they need to start eating differently, they need to give up steak and fries and to replace pasta and pizza with kale and berries. They always look at me like I told them to dig a latrine in the middle of a swamp. Sure, all these changes can feel like climbing Mount Everest in flip-flops, 
But listen, you don't need to start eating 100% healthy by tomorrow, alright? It's not how it works. This isn't some crash diet to get your beach ready in two weeks. This is a long-term treatment for a chronic disease, alright? You want this diet to support you for years, not just a few days. So, approach this diet the right way because remember, the journey to a better kidney health is a march, not a sprint. Trying to overhaul your entire diet in a couple of days would probably leave you with a mess of side effects that are harder to track than your lost TV remote. Because when you make so many changes in so little time, if something goes wrong, how do you even start to look for a culprit? On the other hand, if you add just a couple of things and you have an issue, you will know very well what is causing that issue. So, for the next week, just remove one food that's bad for you and replace it with one healthy option. That's it. One food a week. Keep it simple. But how to tell what to avoid? Well, with the next tip, day 3. Avoiding phosphorus is king of the renal diet. In the study we saw in the intro, the golden rule is crystal clear. Phosphorus is the kryptonite of your kidneys. Those 120 brave patients were on a mission and their entire diet was designed to dodge phosphorus like a politician dodges taxes. Their diet was completely built around avoiding phosphorus and it worked. So here's the simple trick. Anytime you're scratching your head over what to eat or ditch, just ask yourself this. Does it have phosphorus or phosphates? Check the food label or search for the nutrition facts on Google and find out. If it has phosphorus, you give it the boot. You remove it from your diet. Yes, that's it. That's the trick. And trust me when I say that this is going to make a difference. This mind-blowing trick took me years to crack and now you know it too. Just keep it for yourself, okay? We can't let the whole world in on this. Just kidding. Feel free to share this top secret info or this video with anyone and everyone. But why is removing phosphorus so effective at improving kidney function, you may ask? Well, first of all, because phosphorus is the main culprit behind arterial calcification. This is why having too high serum phosphate level is not just associated with faster CKD progression, but with higher risk of all-cause mortality as well. So yeah, if it has phosphorus, avoid it. Phosphorus is to kidneys what sand is to a swimsuit, irritating and best avoided. The only exception to this rule are raw, single-ingredient, plant-based foods, alright? Nuts, seeds, whole grains are the cool kids who always get a pass because plant-based phosphorus is not bioavailable. By the way guys, before we see the next tip, I want to take a minute to say thank you to all the new members that join the channel and that are supporting my work here. Kathir Sayet and Augustine Kate Eunice Ajireloha. Thank you for joining and thank you for supporting me. And thank you also to all the other members. And guys, your support really means a lot to me. For those of you that don't know about this new feature of the channel, there is a little join button you can see right below my videos. And that's a way to help me create more of the content you like for less than what you pay for a coffee. Up next, another day, another tip. Day 4. Add as many colors to your plate as you can. Okay, let's talk about antioxidants. Another perk of replacing unhealthy foods with the healthy plant-based ones is that now you are also getting a ton of antioxidants. But does that really matter, you might wonder? Spoiler alert, yes, it absolutely does, big time. Fact, antioxidants are one of the biggest breakthroughs in the history of the renal diet. Well, I mean, if we don't consider that time they discovered that dietary protein is the main cause of kidney damage, of course. So what we know today about antioxidants is that they do improve your kidney function. And what about colors and your plate, you may ask? 
Here is the trick. Many of the foods which as in antioxidants come in blue, red, orange, or black. For example, red cabbage. All cabbages are awesome for a kidney-friendly diet. They're low in calories, versatile, and red cabbage is even better. It is also packed with antioxidants. And don't forget blackberries. These little guys should be a staple in any renal diet. They're too healthy to leave out. Plus, blackberries are the heavyweight champs of the berry world when it comes to antioxidants. Also, grapes. They're in season right now and they're basically nature's candy. Red grapes in particular are bursting with powerful antioxidants called anthocyanins. These bad boys help control blood pressure, reduce blood vessel damage, and protect against heart disease. Remember, the more the colors, the better. Day 5. This is an easy tip for those of you guys that are starting a plant-based diet. Here's the tip. If you have stopped eating animal-based foods, you need to supplement two vitamins. Yes, two. No, you can't just keep ahead. First of all, there is vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is a key vitamin for kidney health because if this essential nutrient is too low in your body, you are going to face issues such as fatigue and even anemia. This happens because vitamin B12 is needed by the body not just to turn food into energy but also to produce new red blood cells. And guess what? No plant-based food has enough vitamin B12 so you'll need to pop a supplement to keep things running smoothly. Next in line is vitamin D. This sunshine vitamin is essential for a laundry list of bodily functions bone and teeth repair, calcium metabolism, immune system regulation, inflammation control, and even blood pressure regulation. With a arsome like that, it's no wonder low levels of vitamin D can lead to a rapid decline in kidney function. But just like for vitamin B12, getting enough vitamin D from food alone is almost impossible. And in this case, even for sickly patients that are still eating meat. Now, vitamin B12 and vitamin D are not the only two vitamins that people with kidney issues are supposed to supplement so if you want to learn more about what vitamins you need watch my video about this topic it's up here and also down in description day six okay buckle up guys because i'm about to drop the bombshell of the century here is the golden nugget of wisdom for all you diabetes warriors out there here it is Stop obsessing over carbs like a teenager with a TikTok addiction. Instead, start counting calories. That's right, guys. Whip out those calories counting apps you have on your phone and make sure that each and every day you burn significantly more calories than you consume. And voila! The magical <laughs> equation to weight loss and drum roll, please! Diabetes remission is finally unveiled. By science, of course, as we can see. So look, if you have been battling with diabetes for years and despite all your efforts in avoiding carbs and sugar, nothing worked. This is exactly the solution you were looking for. Just make sure you are burning more calories than you consume every day because that's how you lose weight and that's how diabetes can be beaten, says science, of course. Fact. People have put their type 2 diabetes into remission when they lost weight, 16% of their excess body weight to be exact. And if you still don't believe that diabetes can be beaten into remission without giving up carbs, take a look at this study published in 2023 on JCEM and conducted on 36 type 2 diabetes patients. As we can see, 16 out of 36 patients achieved sustained remission from diabetes by following a diet that literally supplemented maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is a type of ultra-processed carb that acts just like sugar in the body, by the way. So yeah, some people are still saying that sugar gives you diabetes. So, if you give extra maltodextrin to diabetes patients, aren't they gonna get super diabetes or something like that? No, they were actually able to get diabetes into remission with a diet that supplemented maltodextrin. How? Witchcraft? <laughs>
No, just good old calorie counting. Look, I'm not saying that you should add maltodextrin to your diet or consume highly processed foods. Quite the opposite, actually. In fact, the way I see it, this type 2 patients improve despite eating maltodextrin. I always recommend cutting almost all processed foods from the diet. So the reason why I'm showing you this study is because these patients achieved a huge success with type 2 diabetes just by limiting their caloric intake. And this is good news, by the way. In fact, with CKD, you can't really remove too much carbohydrates from the diet, all right? You need lots of fruit and veggies in order to protect your kidneys. And what these studies we have just seen prove is that you can eat a diet that's mostly carbs and still beat diabetes into remission as long as the diet you are following makes you lose weight. In short, if your goal is remission from diabetes, stop counting carbs and start counting calories. That's the only proven strategy that's also safe with CKD to lose weight and beat diabetes. Okay guys, one more tip to show you. This is for every single CKD patient. Day 7, let's cut to the chase. In order to make your diet super easy and never waste time wondering if a food is good or bad for you anymore, just keep this in mind. Most plant-based single ingredient foods are good for the kidneys. Most ultra-processed and animal-based foods are bad for the kidneys. I know, I know. This sounds like an oversimplification of the renal diet. And, spoiler alert, it kinda is. I mean, if I could sum up the entire renal diet in two lines, what's even the point of making this video? Just to watch me talk? However, guys, a new study just came out a few months ago and they were able to prove that those two lines of wisdom are, with a few exceptions, spot on. In fact, according to this very large 20-year-long prospective cohort study involving 2,539 CKD patients, eating most animal-based or processed foods is linked to a huge increase for the risk of fast CKD progression and all-cause mortality. On the other hand, most plant-based foods have been found to have kidney-protecting properties. So does this mean the renal diet is now as simple as a toddler's bedtime story? If it's in the produce aisle, it's good. If it's not, it's bad. Well, of course not. Life isn't that straightforward and neither is your diet. There are a few curveballs to watch out for. Some processed foods still make the cut and there are a few sneaky fruits and veggies that could be more an enemy than a friend. But hey, let's not let those few exceptions rain on our kidney-friendly parade. No curveball is going to be able to fly past you. In fact, I recently uploaded a video to show you exactly what to eat and what to avoid. It's up here and also down in the description. And this is all for today. Thank you guys for watching and God bless you all. Bye!